Welcome to Wayzata High School as CCX Sports presents Lake Conference Girls Lacrosse. The second meeting of the season here between the Hopkins Royals and the Wayzata Trojans. I am Jay Wilcox along with Dan Ficken. And Dan, uh, couldn't get much closer the first time around. 8-7 in overtime for the Royals. So we look for another pretty good one here tonight. Well, it's it's an important game, uh, especially for section seating and stuff like that. And in the late conference, I believe both these teams are tied to the same record. And uh, this is kind of a, a big match for uh, both these teams to see who's going to end up in third place in the uh, in the late conference. So we are underway. Why Zeta's in white and Hopkins in black as the Trojans control it to start things out. Elise Johnson, the freshman, possessing and drops the pass back. Ellie Ronning, one of the captains, controlling here for the Trojans. She'll slip it over to Alyssa Story. Pass deflected, but still reached its intended target there. Ellie Olmanson. Now the Trojans getting a good first possession here. Let's see if it can result in a good scoring chance for them. Into traffic, here's the quick shot, goes wide from Johnson. Goalie for the Royals, by the way, is Lucy Swift, number 11. Been battling an ankle injury, but gets the call here tonight. Boy, good patience, good ball movement, by the way, Zeta Trojans. And the twice they got her in the guts, the second time resulted in a shot. Didn't quite get the net, but good movement. They're moving the ball really well, Jed. Their coaching staff saying they've learned a lot as the season's gone on. Here's a shot that goes just wide from Alyssa Story. Obviously, just a couple of wins this year, but they feel like they're quite a bit better team now, even than when the season yeah. started. Well, they're coming in on a two-game winning streak here. The uh, last two games they've won, and uh, they beat Adana. And uh, um, there's another team they beat. I'm sorry, but you know they put two together here, and it's the first time they've done that all season. So this is the right time. Story from the free position here for the Trojans, and that shot deflected. They get possession back, though. Johnson able to scoop it up here. Wyzetta's had the ball from the get-go here early in this game. Hopkins able to sag back nicely and clog the middle. They get a pass in close again, and Swift able to make a save. Almost wonder if Wyzetta isn't a little too close on that opportunity there as Ronning really didn't have much of an option, but they get a turnover forced and get the ball right back. Cutting nice. around to pick and scoring is Emily Wisniewski, and Wyzetta is on the board. Well, a good move. Didn't worry that time about passing in the middle. Just a good move. Look at this. Just quick dodge. She got an opening, and she took it, and she hit the net. Got it in there for a one nothing lead. Good shot. High low. The sophomore forward. So Wisniewski puts Wyzen on the board, 219 into the contest, and it all started with uh, controlling it from the get-go there off the faceoff. Well, the Royals have given up an average of 13 goals a game, and uh, you know, it's been a tough year defensively for them. They've uh, done pretty good as far as scoring, but uh, pretty much two people, Skadron and, and Gallinson for them, and now we're going to get an opportunity to see them on offense. Sadie Skadron, we had the foul call there. So Skadron from the free position, Carolyn running in net for Wyzetta. Skadron turning, goes, trying to go up high with it, missed the net, it'll be Hopkins' possession. Well, it's first chance Hopkins has had on the offensive side. We'll see how they can move the ball around here. See where their cutters come around. Number six and number seven are the two we probably should watch. They've been the leading scorers. Here is Skadron possessing right now. Number six for the Royals. Trying to get a little step and turn the corner. One was denied. And she will get it back. Tried to drop that pass back. It went a little over the head of Kylie Hanley. And now we have a whistle. Hanley controlling it here, a very good hockey player, as is Wisniewski, who just scored for Wyzetta. Well, 
Remember, he had a high stick check there. That's why that free position. That's why the whistle and the free position. And the sticks have got to stay under control. Can't be close to the head within nine inches, and also cannot have a stick going toward a body. Here's Samantha Gallinson, and she, she buries it. it, bounces it home for the Royals, and they tie it up here. That one coming four minutes into the contest as Gallinson from the free position then goes low with the shot and running, doing her best, but could not block it from that close range. Gallinson with her 25th goal of the season. She is their leading scorer. Um, Good spread of uh, 25 goals, 12 assists for 37 points. Not a whole lot of seniors on this Royals team, but two of them are those two leading scorers that Dan talked about, uh, Gallinson and Skadron. Yeah, they've actually got nine ninth and 10th graders on the team. The, the future looks bright for them. And, uh, you know, again, they can set an attitude now by how they finish the season, Jay, with these last two games and then them moving into sections. Teams are going to be in the same section next year, but uh, as of this year, still not. Yep. Hopkins in with uh, Blake and Breck, probably the favorites, and Benilde in there as well. And uh, for Wyzetta, it's a little bit different thing, and they've got uh, a little bit of a different mix of opponents in their section eight. Jane Wiesner, or excuse me, uh, make that story controlling now for the Trojans. Drops it off to Wisniewski. Their coach, Krista Crandall, said they played a little too individual the first time they played Hopkins, so that was definitely a focus for them tonight is use, the, you know, use your teammates better. Well, they certainly started out that way. Their offensive flow the first couple times, Jay, when they scored that goal was, was really well done as far as ball movement and, and creating openings for each other. So um, done a good job there. Hanley circling around, defended there by Olivia Buen. Well, and Coach Crandall, too, talked about, you know, she's more, obviously, especially early in the season, and but even out throughout the regular season, she's more interested in, you know, making sure they're developing their skills individually and as a team more so than just the win-loss record. There's a nice stop there. Yeah. As, uh, really robbed her there, running, able to make a big save on Skadron. Yeah, Scattering got in tight, you know, their leading goal scorer. And uh, she got that basket up right in the grill and uh, did a nice job. Story on the move here for Wyzetta. Spins away from the defender. They're going to go to a free position. Stick got up into the, uh, you can see where the ref put his head hand up close to his face, got into that halo nine inch area close by and we'll have a free position here now. Junior Alyssa Story with it here for the Trojans. Story goes to the net yeah. and puts it away. And uh, Hopkins kind of saying, wasn't that a little bit of a false start? His story looked like she started a... <laughs> Whoop. Little hesitation there. That would have been a legal procedure on an offensive line, that's for sure. Might have got some people to hesitate. But she got it in there enough, and uh, they called it legal. And uh, Hopkins, or uh, Wyzetta goes back up by a goal 2-1. And these face-offs, Jay, are so important. I mean, it can change a game on you. If one team can start getting on a run, they can start building a lead here. And uh, so far, I think it's been pretty even. I think both teams have each won their fair share. Yeah, the Hopkins coaches, that was one of the things they mentioned right away when I said, you know, what's, what's the key for you tonight? And they said draws were definitely one of the things that they need to do better. Okay. Got another stick up into the air again. The stick, when you check with it, has got to go away or down from the body. It can't come toward the body, and that's what happened there, thus the whistle. Wisniewski looking for a cutter coming through. Now flicks that pass out front, knocked away. Battle for that ground ball there, and they still, now the Trojans do come up with it. And the quick shot, though, goes wide. And it will be Hopkins' possession. 
as Olmanson unable to put that one away for Wyzetta. And that pass didn't Ooh. connect for Hanley. They've had that happen a couple of times now yeah. where they've been able to get possession, but then a uh, bad clear costs them. Wisniewski flips the pass out front. Boy, they're not conceding any of these passes in tight. It's nice to see Hopkins really yeah. scrapping after everything. <laughs> it's a good battle. You know, but turnovers here, Jay, right in this area, it can kill you. You've got to be sharp on it, and, and you want to be aggressive, you know, as far as your, your defense here. And uh, uh, I, this is a good play by, by the goalie here. She's taking her time, uh, and she's looking for an opening. That, on the other end, was not a good play. Kind of threw it into the open air. Trojans get it after the turnover. Mandy Rezebeck now getting that pass ahead. Kimball Utsi with it, number 16. Utsi able to connect with Johnson. Didn't like the traffic, so spun away and back out. Story, who scored that last goal for the Trojans. Trying to get it to his new ski. It was deflected, but then she'll get it anyway. His new ski flipping the pass out front. Story trying to turn and get a shot, but couldn't. And then that pass did not connect. And it will be Hopkins' possession. Well, will see if Hopkins can, uh, can get a good clear. Uh, you know, I like the way was that is moving the ball. They might be moving it a little bit too much. You know, they might they might have some dodge opportunities that they might have taken advantage of, like Wisniewski's first goal. Wisetta well, being very aggressive, uh, pressuring the outlet here too, and it's given Hopkins some trouble. They're not just conceding a, a pass nope. or two upfield. Well, it's going to force Hopkins to get somebody open. They've got to be moving. And yeah, be open for a pass. Again, we got a lifting motion on the stick by the Hopkins player. So we get a free position in the field where they send the players behind and the boys that a person get moving. Trojans quickly move nice. it upfield. Nice pass into the open space there and a good opportunity to go toward the net. But Olmanson bothered as she attempted to uh, line it up to shoot it there. Will stay Trojan's possession. Well, it looks like she had an opening, but the sticks came in real close and kind of shut her down. They caused her to hesitate, but here we go. Little pick there, and the freezer yeah. up for the goal. Turning the corner was Annika Swanson, and she buries it. The Trojans now lead 3-1. to one. Boy, very nice play here. Look at the pick coming around, and goalie was just all by, her, by herself, dead to rights, and she picked a good spot. Went up high and got it in the net, giving the Trojans a two-goal lead. Looked like a situation where Hopkins maybe didn't communicate as well as they could have, though, on that on that pick there, too, yeah. as they got caught and didn't uh, give any help, and Swanson was only too happy to, to take advantage of it. So it's been interesting why Zeta's had the possession most of the time, and they've been able to put together three separate scoring mm -hmm. chances and converted. Hopkins, really the one and only time that they've had good possession, they did score. So here again, why draws are so important, and here's Hopkins this time getting it. Well, yeah, uh, Jay, I, I'm just, uh, like you said, you picked it out really quick, but Wazetti is playing some clinging defense here. They are not letting him get two steps without somebody stepping in front of a black clad person there in, in, in Hopkins. That time a little too aggressive maybe, <laughs> and, uh, just as you say that, but that's all right. You take that, you know, you know that's going to happen some if you're playing hard. Oh, well, sure. You know, the, the one thing, too, about this, about lacrosse here in the girls' game is that it's like, like basketball. It, if you're a defensive player and you establish position before the, the offensive player gets there, you get it, and, and you can't have charging. And, uh, but there'll be some physical contact that way when you're playing that way. Goalkeeper Ronning will get the return pass here. Coaches were saying that she's, she's really been able to relax and, and just kind of enjoy playing later in the season after she started out a little bit slow. And... and uh, that's obviously an important thing for a goalie. You want to be intense. You want to be looking for it, but you have to stay relaxed, too. Yeah, it's really important in a game. Stay loose. I mean, you got that big basket. Use it to your advantage. And uh, 
Uh, the other thing I like, too, is, is be aggressive. Step out of the net, everyone. So they're in close, tight on you. Get that basket right in their grill. Here comes Hamley up the left side here Ooh. for the Royals, turning on some speed. Kylie Hamley weaving her way to the front. Had it knocked loose before she could pull the trigger there. Well, she did a nice job of trying to switch hands there. Just got nudged uh, by was that a player's stick and uh, kind of forced it out. But nice job of switching hands. Hamley gets it back. Timeout taken here by John Smart and the Royals. Right. As they see an opportunity to get something going here, so they'll lay the sticks down and head over for a little talk. Dan, with as much rain and as cloudy as it's been these last couple of days, I think the uh, players on both teams got to be a little shocked when the, the sun popped out here in full here for this uh, first half of this one. Yeah, it's, <laughs> man, it's been a soggy week, but, uh, you know, it's good to see this too, and it just makes playing that much more pleasurable, you know. You get a nice sunny day out, and it's, it's not too hot, not too cold. You can go out and play the best, and you can get a look at both the coaches here for Hopkins and uh, Krista Grandel from, from Oizetta. That was a really well-timed timeout by John Smart here for the Hopkins uh, Royals. You know, they got possession in it. They're getting faced with some really tight defense by the Trojans. You know, this might be a good opportunity to set some pick plays in place for Hopkins, you know, to kind of spring somebody loose, especially their, their two top scorers here in, in Scattering and Gallinson. So we'll see if he tries to, to force that issue coming off the top and I get them open for a shot. Overall, the ball movement's been pretty good, but that defense, boy, I'll tell you what, if you don't get it secured right away, you're probably going to end up losing it. That's really been uh, the Georgia's forte here so far in this, this half. Hopkins has had a little bit of a tough stretch down the tail end of the regular season. They had a win over Cooper, but uh, four losses sandwiched around that. But sometimes that's a, a product just, too, of how your schedule falls. I think a lot of times you maybe get a little too caught up in saying, well, this team's hot right now and that team's not. And a lot of times, too, it's you know where you're meeting those, those toughest opponents, too. Well, I think you said, too, Jay. I mean, they've had a lot of injuries, too. They couldn't count on who's going to be in the lineup. I looked here at when both teams were introduced, Hopkins has got three people on their bench. You know, and then with all the running that goes on, boy, that, that's a little thin. And uh, But again, you want to you want to finish strong, and especially going into the section that Hopkins is going into. Oh, boy. You know, I, I think Wyzetta, I think they're, you know, Maple Grove is going to be, I think, the number one seed in that section coming through. And, uh, that's going to be a tough little road to hold, but I think Hobbs has got a real tough one with that. That section is loaded. Coach Smart felt, uh, you know, as of right now, obviously this game could still impact it, I would think, but he thought his team probably would slot in as either the number four or five seed in that section. Mm -hmm. Got four wins against a good schedule. If they could get to five here tonight, obviously they're not going to be seated ahead of the Blakes and the Brax, but... Um, you know, they, they feel like they could at least be in that middle uh, at four or five. Well, I'm not have to run any of the one of the B teams until, you know, the semis or, or until the semis. Allenson interchanging here, continuing to hold number seven for the Royals. And a spin away, the help defense arrives. Gallinson still looking to get a shot away, bounced it over the net. It's going to oh. be Hopkins' possession, it appears. Boy, Resbeck did a nice race job there. That was a pretty close call. I don't know if I would, would have given it back to Hopkins, to be honest with you, but boy, that is really hustling. They're really putting it out there. Abby Martin. Changes directions. No goal. Whistle before the shot was taken. Again, stick high. Back in the halo area. So they didn't get that goal, but they still have a good opportunity here. Yeah, the angle's kind of bad here, though, for I wonder if she'll pass off. Martin instead oh. goes up high and buries it. So Abby Martin gets Hopkins back to within a goal. She said, I wanted that 
first one to count and instead gets this one to go here. Whoa, nice, well-placed shot. You know, and this is a shot in the arm that, you know, that they need. That they, they need somebody besides, you know, um, their two leading scorers, Gadden and Gallison, to start putting the ball in the net. And it uh, drops off pretty quick after those two. And, you know, that's a good sign right there. She hit a nice hole in that in the short side. Hopkins girls scored by number one. Oh, nice. Abigail Martin. Time to go Royals looking to go quickly time. back on the attack again and just lost before she could line it up there. Kristen Mandeville. Ellie Ronning's pass a little bit high, but recovered there nicely by Anna Logan. And they get it in front and score it. Swanson able to put that one away. Wait a minute, no goal. Was she in the crease? Oh, she must have been in the crease. That kind of looked like a Stanley Cup goal there, Jay. Jay you know, kind of a deflection in front with somebody parked there. It might be like a three-second rule. You can only stay within that arc area for three seconds, so that's why you see people running through it. They don't stand there. They can't stand there. they got to keep moving through. That probably is what the call was. Swift trying to find someone who's got a step or two on the defender and now does connect with Gallinson. Looks to her right and gets the pass on target. Melissa A strike. And she does a nice job there too, I'll tell you. Nice! Ace Frank oh. turns the corner and scores. And now we're even up at three as Hopkins answers back after some good possession time for the Trojans. Whoop. Watch Ace Strike turns the corner short side high. Boy, first really bad mistake by Wyzetta's defense that they she just kept rocking and rolling and nobody picked her up coming around. She saw it right away. And she went right to the front of the net and, and ripped it. Boy, she got a nice smile on her face. She's pretty happy about that one. Tying the game up here. I think Wyzetta, in, in particular, the uh, goalie running, probably thought she was going to take at least one more step out for a better angle. But she did a nice job of getting her shoulders turned and, and uh, hitting really right inside the top corner. Yeah, I mean, but she started planning that shot about six steps before she got there, though. She saw the whole thing. Shot there wide by Wisniewski. Boy, I think that's the quickest Wyzetta's taken a shot the entire half here. They got, came down and Wisniewski let her go right away. So we'll see if they continue to move the ball around. Like I said, instead of, quote, unquote, being selfish, they'll keep moving it around. Flipped out front and call here going against the Royals. Hmm. Not really a free position here because she can't, uh, you know, somebody's got to be behind her. But she really can't shoot this now because somebody's in her way. Yep, she had to move aside. Oh, she lost it. Pops up in the air and over hustling to get it there was Ashton Utsi for Wyzetta. Utsi's pass to the front. Turnaround try, missed the net. It will stay with the Trojans though. They kind of dominated early and they had a 3-1 lead, but Hopkins has gotten a couple in a row. They have. They've really moved the, started moving the ball a little bit better. And Wyzetta here, you know, Hopkins picked up the defense, too. That the Wyzetta's not finding the open people to pass the ball to, and they've gone back to a little bit more individual play of running dodges. Here's Wisniewski looking, fakes, now drops the pass off. In close again and backing it out of there is Haley Olson. Yeah, that was a nice play. That was she 
Haley Olsen did the right thing there. Oh! Finds the trailer, but a nice save by yeah. Swift. And now the Royals coming back hard the other way. Gallinson controlling it. Spins, oh, oh, fires, oh, oh. and scores. Oh, oh man. Gallinson doing it on her own that time and buries it, and the Royals are back in front, or in front, I should say, for the first time. Ladies and gentlemen, the leading scorer for the Royals, or, or the leading goal scorer of here. Nice job. Just went in, did a nice through 60 turn, and bangs it home. You know, it, it's got to be encouraging for the Royals, too. They've just got two goals to tie it up from two people that don't normally score, and then now their top scorer steps up, or their top goal scorer steps up and uh, puts one in to uh, give them a lead. I think there's a little bit of early movement there, so they called it dead. Somebody stepped into the circle early. Nice win by the Trojans. Now after they get scored on, it's really important to get a possession back. And oh my gosh. That almost looked like boys lacrosse there for a minute. They got a little physical with each other. Last goal for Hopkins, by the way, by Skadron, not Gallinson. My mistake, it was a Skadron. Saw the number all the way, just had those two flip-flops. So Skadron... Getting her first goal of the night. Trojans again possessing it in tight, and now we'll work it back out to Story. I, I think the Royals have kind of figured out that the Trojans are trying to go right into the guts there and played a lot better defense. Yeah, there's something to be said for spacing, too, and I think at times they've gotten a little too bunched up. Yeah. And kind of forcing it in there. And I, I like the way they're battling, but, you know, sometimes, like I said, back her out, start her out again, and maybe you can get a dodge from out top. Royals on the move again here up the left side. And Ooh. the battle won there by Wyzetta is Olivia Buen. Okay, there's a stick across the body there, so, you know, we stop playing to get a, f a free position in the field uh, to go move ahead. But I was kind of surprised, you know, there's there's some physical play there. I was surprised they didn't stop it on the, on the turnover. Able to connect with Laugan, and here they come left side, Ashley Greenshields. Flips the pass across, oh. and no shot. Had a whistle before she could let that one go. Again, there's a stick across coming in toward the body there. It was kind of laid out horizontally and coming toward it so we get a free position there. And a story. Yep. And she puts it away, and we are tied back up now at 4-4. Well, you can see a nice play there. She just finds a good spot. She looks like she's going over to the left side, and she brings it back to the right and beats her on the short side. Nice uh, nice shot selection by Alyssa Story there. Yeah, we kind of knew this one was going to kind of go back and forth, and it's been close all the way. There's only been a two-goal spread at one point uh, by Wyzetta, but, but Hopkins came back and took a lead, actually, and uh, uh, you see kind of an ebb and flow between these two teams. See why it was 8-7 in overtime the last time they played. Off oh. the draw, controlled by the Royals is Sadie Skadron on the move here for Hopkins. Skadron answers immediately just as they're starting to announce the Wyzetta goal. Skadron puts another one away here for the Royals. Had a great plan on the draw, Jay. She knew just where she wanted to put it, just back over her, her shoulder, and then she just grabbed it and went and just beats him on plain speed. The beautiful shot down, you know, high-low down in the lower left corner and bounces it in. 
That one just 11 seconds after the YZ goal. So Scadron getting a pair in a row. And again, I apologize, Sadie, last time initially <laughs> said it wrong. Uh, she gets her second in a row here for the Royals, and they go back in front five to four. That gives Sadie 33 goals on the season. She knows how to find that net. Well, and keep in mind, uh, you know, the, the teams they're playing, too. Yes, you know, Hopkins isn't, as a team, going to be a top 10 team or, or whatever, but uh, they're playing against a lot of good opponents. For her to oh, get yeah. that kind of totals is impressive. Yeah, she's a player. I mean, you know. One of the things I noticed, I, I don't know if it was Scadron or if it was Gallinson, but wearing a true Minnesota sweatshirt, which is you know, one of the off-season teams that go and tour across the United States and play out east in Baltimore and Delaware and Pennsylvania during the summer and giving them an opportunity to be seen by college coaches. And to make a team like that, you got to be pretty good. Story controlling it here for YZ. Turns Aww. the corner and scores. It looked like... Lucy Swift didn't even see that one coming. Story has her third of the night. Story just blew on her. Watch this. She just gets it, and all of a sudden, okay, see ya. I'm just going to go right around you. She went by two people. They let her go, and it's, there she goes. She finds that right side again and buries it. Well, they're just going back and forth. We've got another tie game at five apiece. You know, at this point, Jay, two things are going to be happening. Mean, these draws are going to be very important. And frankly, I think goaltending is going to be important. Whoever can get the key save at the right time might make the difference in this game. Yeah, really, even if you, you know, maybe steal one or two that, that yep. could have been goals or should have been goals might be enough to be the difference. Yeah. Obviously, you're not going to stop everything, and chances like some of these are even the best of goalies wouldn't have gotten to them. But oh, no. Uh, more and more in this game, it's not necessarily how many you save; it's when you save them at that particular time. So, oh, big win for YZ here. YZ goes if they pick it up. Alyssa Story, time of the goal: 3:55 remaining in the first half. Oh, Hopkins with the free position here. Again, the ever-loving stick check in the wrong way in girls lacrosse. Scadron running it upfield here. Had it knocked away. They try to push it back out and do get it to Hanley. She will leave it for Gallinson. Gallinson, nice move. Yeah, no. Oh. They called an offensive charge there, maybe. Yes, they did. Established position here. 16 Kimmel, let's see, made a nice job, established position, stepped over, and uh, basically got a charge. Nice play. Counter attack here for YZ. Story, who's been hot shooting it tonight here. Drifting over to the left. Now gets that pass in close. The shot wasn't really a whole lot of room for Haley Olson to unleash that one. It goes wide. The story made a good play, though. She knew she didn't have anything going. She, you know, and she's hot right now. She scored the last two, but knew she didn't have it, and she passed it off. Nice play. Story with possession again here for the Trojans as they try to break a 5-5 five to five tie. Now Olsen taking the pass here for the Trojans. Pushed out wide and she will drop it in behind now. Swanson chased back. And now we'll get the call made here. Up, stick up in the halo area on that one. Oh, it might have been an illegal. Oh, whatever. 
free position for Oisette here. Good opportunity. Yep. And the goal. So Elise Johnson's going to get this one for the Trojans, I believe. Boy, it was a nice free position position right there. Well, I tell you, they had her spread out. There must have been something on the backside with the stick or that got her into that position. And, boy, she didn't even hesitate. She went right to the front and put it away. Yeah, I think that Hopkins wasn't quite sure what got called there, and they're asking for an explanation on why the placement, because that was a very favorable free position placement for the Trojans. And I think on this draw, whoever comes up with it, with a minute 30 left, get possession and just work it in the attack zone. And just get work for a last shot here. See if you can get either a two-goal lead or get the game tied up. Scooped up here by Kimball Utsi for the Trojans. Elise Johnson. Come the goal, 130 remaining in the first half. Story works it up high here. Three second violation in the in the uh, twelve meter arc area. Again, they got to keep moving through that area that they can't stand there. Okay, and that ground ball. Then we had a legal st stick coming up to the body in the ground ball. Amanda Olson moving it up here for the Royals. All right, some physical contact there from a little bit from behind. You've got to be even or you've got to be in front. Olson taking the shot and running, able to stop that one without too much trouble. Pass gets away uh -oh. and scooped up nicely, uh -oh. and on the move is Gallinson. Gallinson going to the front, trying to bounce one in up high on the far side, but didn't get it done. It will be Hopkins' possession. Great hustle by Gallinson there, Jay. I mean, he, she missed the shot. She saw there's nobody back there. She kept going. She actually beat the goalie to the ball. And look where Ronning is, way out of the yeah. net here. She has to hurry, try and get back. Pass knocked away, and now we get our call made here. BYZ a possession. Yep. Free position here. It's kind of like an illegal stick. Or a legal check. Trojans looking to push it upfield oh, in a man. hurry, and they've got a chance. And a goal. Buried by Haley Olsen with just three seconds left. Wyzetta had a nice plan to work it upfield in a hurry, and it paid off. Oh, that outlet pass to her was just absolutely fabulous, Jay, and it gave him an opportunity, and she took it. She actually split that D and got a shot. And uh, got another goal here. Maybe that yeah, put them up by two. Kind of demoralizing if it happens against you for Hopkins. They were figuring that at worst they were going to go in down one. Well, it's kind of like giving up a goal in the last two minutes of a hockey game. You don't want to do that. 
And now we will reach the halfway point of a close and entertaining first half here at YZ. Lake Conference Girls Lacrosse, our score at halftime is YZ 7, Hopkins 5. We'll have first half highlights and then our second half of play here on CCX Sports. Start a story. Adopt at theshelterpetproject.org. And welcome back here to Wyzetta High School. It's a 7 to 5 matchup here as Wyzetta leading Hopkins at halftime as we take a look at our first half highlights. And Wyzetta kind of took control on the early part and was Nooski scored a goal just over two minutes in. And then they come right back as a nice goal. There, Swanson getting one a little bit later. That one made it three to one. And then it's a strike. Watch her spin behind the net, turn and just go up high, short side. Bury it there for the Royals. And then Skadron coming right back and getting a goal here as she spun away. Nice individual effort. Most of their goals have really come off individual plays. Yeah. And then it's Skadron again here for Hopkins. They surged into the lead. They scored three goals in a row in about a just over four-minute span. Wyzetta kind of returning uh, serve here a little bit, if you will, as Story buries one low. She had a good first half with three. And then yeah. uh, they get one very late in the half here. This one's got to boost their confidence and bring the Royals down a little bit because that one came with only three seconds to go after a call at the other end that uh, led to a goal. And Olsen buried it. You see Eden Prairie, uh, clearly the, the class of the yeah. lake in uh, girls lacrosse, and heading into their last uh, uh, conference match. It was seven and zero record. And see these teams right now tied up at one and six. So, it, you know, like you said, at least you get off the bottom if you <laughs> for the winner here tonight. And that's something to aim for against uh, this good competition. We'll be back with our second half in a moment. It is YZ7 and Hopkins 5 here on CCX Sports. Hey, did you know 2.4 million loving cats and dogs in shelters and rescues need our help to find a home? Let's go to theshelterpetproject.org and meet a few are in a shelter near you. Harlow, oh, she's one great listener who loves to hear all your stories. My kind of cat, Cerulo. Is a sweet, goofy boy who's eager to please. Sounds just like another dog I know. So go to the shelterpetproject.org, search your local shelters and rescues, and go for a cuddle with your next best friend. Adopt. Welcome back here to Wyzetta. Sun starting to set now here and uh Second half of action, still anybody's contest, obviously, here at 7-5. to five. And I'm not saying that just because of the score, Dan, but just how yeah. the play went, too. You can kind of feel that this one has a chance to kind of go back and forth and ebb and flow, and maybe whoever has, uh, you know, got the, the hot hand late might be the team that can pull out the victory here. Well, you know, Hawkins has been down two goals before, and then they took, scored three unanswered, got a one-goal lead. So nothing settled yet. This one's going to go right down to the end, and... Uh, Considering it is an important game for both teams, especially in the lake here. Uh, somebody wants to get out of the cellar here. Oh, that was a pretty draw. That was right right on the money. I, she pulled it right to the bright player, and she picked it up on the move. Swanson getting the pass ahead now as she finds Haley Olson, who scored with three seconds to go before halftime. Boy, good setup too. Haley Olsen just took her time. She didn't try to force a, force a play or force a shot. Got them all set up and see if they can get into their rotation that they had, they had started out the game with. 
Oh. Looks in front and buried there by Ellie Olmanson off the nice feed from Olson. Oh, she they, they kept it on the perimeter and moved it nice. Now just watch how open she gets. She finds a slot, finds a seam right there, and just gets down and gets a great shot. That was a beautiful play. You know, Coach Crandall was talking about unselfish play. Boy, I'll tell you what, that, that was a, just a great example of it to give away Zeta. The largest lead that we've seen tonight so far, 8-5. to five. Good patience there, too. I mean, it, it kind of shows you that if you're making the right cut and, and uh, you know, making the right pass, that there is room there, even though it isn't a lot of room. If you're able to have good skill and connect like that, you get it. Yeah, and, and timing, when to walk into that seam when you got enough space between everybody and the passer to recognize it. Calls goes against Wyzetta right here, and Skadron will start it back the other way for the Royals. Gallinson, I think, broke that. Boy, they had a double team. They had four set up across the straight up. Oh, wow. Somebody was in the shooting area that was standing there and blocking a shot opportunity. And that's why we got the free position. Gallinson will try and get Hopkins on the board here. Goes right to the net and calmly buries it. So Gallinson will get her second of the night and a much needed goal there for the Royals. When you let her in that deep, you just don't want her there because she just knows exactly where to put the ball. She took it up high left. And frankly, Ronning didn't even have a chance on that one. Whittles it back down to a two-goal lead now for the Trojans. You know, Scadron, you know, has, has done a great job also as a, as a draw specialist here, too. We've seen her do really two really want great ones more where she got to herself and just went down and scored. And she's been doing a nice job. Ellie Johnson scooping it up here for the Trojans. Or excuse me, Elise Johnson. Nice play by number 10, Kylie Hanley for the Royals. There got up and blocked that shot and then got it on the ground and got herself a free position. Hanley loses it, gets it right back though. Hanley surveying the field here. She brings it up the left side. Here's a strike cut off. I think for the, the, certainly for the goalie at the other end and also the spectators and us and our camera folks having that sunset has, has been a help. It was a little rugged there looking toward, <laughs> you know, toward our right or screen yeah. right here for all of us in that first half. And it's certainly much easier to see things now. Okay, yeah, why is that a turnover free position on just outside the 12 meter arc? Ashton Utsi loses it. You know, the thing is, you know, with the girls' game, too, it's, it's really hard. People don't understand that the girls' stick, the girls' basket, is way different than the boys'. It's much harder to hold on to the ball in the girls' game than it is in the boys' game. They can have a pouch. The girls cannot have a pouch at all in there. It's pretty flat. So when they're catching and throwing like this, they're doing a really good job. Story cutting it hard to the middle. Okay, obstruction of shot there. By number 18 for Hopkins, thus the feed free position. Story trying to put it back to a three goal lead and not able to do so. Another crack at it here for the Trojans. Oh my. There's a little bit of confusion there, a little hesitation. 
And this one hurt. Yeah, she got knocked down pretty good. Ashton Utsi, the freshman, checking for blood on the nose there, it looked like. I think the nose or the lip. Yeah, you she might got be right. Lip. It must be the mouth. Yeah. Wonder if she took a stick there or had her slam back into her. Oh, Ooh, God. Yes, she sure did. Gallinson really came in hard on her and got the basket right up against her chops. I'm surprised uh, she didn't get a yellow card on that one. There's a look at Krista Crandall, the Trojans. Uh, t t taking over after uh, a couple of years as JV coach. Mm -hmm. And actually played at Minnetonka. So it's a little interesting when she goes against the skippers. And she said, also, not just do I play...